I'm Rick. And I'm Valerie. Uh, Lawson. And uh, we're from Washington State originally. Uh, we both grew up there, uh, just north of Seattle. And uh, we own a home since 2011 in the eastern part of the state, uh, which was where I left to come to New Haven uh, to go to school at Yale. And uh, in the process of doing that, Val decided to stay and work um, because her job had benefits and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you were staying in Washington State? Yeah, I stayed in Washington State um, for the first year while Rick was in school. Um, we had two dogs and I had just started a position about six months before Rick got accepted to Yale. So I felt like we weren't quite ready. I wasn't quite ready to make the move out. Um, but we decided in May 2015 that we were ready. Time was we were ready to make the journey. <laughs> so you decided that you were going to drive from Washington State to New Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit about that experience of that road trip all the way across the country? Sure. So in the spring of of, of my term, about February, March of 2015, I was in school full time. But while I was going to school, I was uh, I was in the process of buying a vehicle in the state of Washington, sending it to different shops to build it up to get it ready for cross country, and creating a plan to make something bigger and more meaningful out of our road trip than just simply going on a sightseeing journey. Um, so I decided to raise money and awareness for veterans charities. Uh, so by the time I got back home to Washington State, uh, everything was ready to go. We just packed up all our things and uh, we created our route that would go through the south of America and then up into Connecticut. So it wasn't the fastest way to get here, but um, we thought it would be the funnest way to get here. Uh, so we, we left Washington on Mother's Day of uh, 2015, and uh, our family was there to see us off, so that was pretty fun. Um, and uh, we drove down through into Idaho, um, Oregon, and then into Idaho where we stayed at Craters of the Moon National Park. And it just was, uh, we had never been there before, and we had never seen anything like it. It really looks like a moonscape sort of uh, atmosphere with uh, all kinds of volcanic rock everywhere and rock formations. It was it was a very stark but beautiful, beautiful um, landscape. And from there we made our way down to um, Utah and uh, we got to drive around and do a little bit of off-roading in addition to the sightseeing um, along some of the places like Arches National Monument and um, parts of the Moab area, um, which is a popular off-roading recreational area. Um, and the whole time we were doing this road trip, our intent was to camp. So uh, we were trying to minimize our use of staying in hotels. So up until this point, at least, we had we had stayed in hotels all the way down through into Utah and... Um, no, we camped. I mean, yeah. that we had, yeah, so yeah. we had camped the entire way down into Utah and then Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, once we got to Arizona, that was a different story. Everything changed. The weather got really, really bad. Um, we were camping with our, not only Rick and I, but our friend Raymond who came with us and then our dog who weighs about 96 pounds. He's like the size of a person, pretty much. <laughs> um, all packed into our vehicle. So when we got to Arizona and the weather, it snowed on us, which we weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit more prepared than I think Rick and Raymond were because <laughs> I was like, I knew I was moving from Washington to Connecticut, and I know that you guys have bad winters here. So I had packed my winter stuff, but Rick and Raymond, they had like shorts and flip-flops. They were like <laughs> ready for vacation. So so they were pretty, we weren't really prepared for snow. We ended up like stopping at this little town in outside of um, Flagstaff. Flagstaff and were able to get like sweatpants and like shoes for the guys. So. 
it was bearable, but just barely. We didn't last too long in the snow, <laughs> just a couple days. Well, tell yeah. us a little bit about, you know, show us your cards and mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how you used it as an opportunity to raise money for a good cause. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, in the process of planning for the trip, we, we uh, wanted to do something bigger than ourselves and, and make it meaningful. So, uh, we created what we called the Honor Expedition. And um, the idea was to use the the trip as an opportunity to honor veterans and their sacrifice by creating awareness and funds for certain veteran charities. And so um, we partnered with a few different charities. Uh, we partnered with an organization out of New Mexico called Paws and Stripes, who uh, takes rescue, service an rescue animals uh, and trains them to be service dogs for veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, Boulder Crest Retreat in uh, Bloomont, Virginia, which is a world-class cabin retreat for military veterans that's free of charge for them to go and stay and get away from it all. Um, they also have healing um, programs for the veterans and their families there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Yale Veterans Association, because uh, I, was a, I'm a, I was a student there at the time, and uh, I'm also a veteran, and so I wanted to uh, support that group as well for all that they do for the community here as well. So you took the trip in 2015. Yes. And then did you get people to sort of sponsor different lakes of the journey, or how did you do that? Uh, we, we actually just, um, we weren't extremely focused on, like, sponsorship that way but what we tried to do is we would just try to spread the message about these organizations that that don't get that much publicity or recognition mm -hmm. around the country and it was more really about um, getting these smaller organizations well known around the country and just talking to people one-on-one -on -one and, and uh, we would we would ask people if they wanted to donate on the road or we would direct them to our website so that they could donate through the website but we weren't we weren't asking people to sponsor a lake per se. Um, uh, but we we were able to raise money. Uh, where at the end of our trip, we were able to send um, pretty nice checks to each of the participating organizations and um, support their missions. And had you seen anybody else do this before, or did you kind of come up with this as uh, your project? So I had heard of other people like bicycling across the United mm -hmm. States or walking across for different purposes, but usually those were done with the specific intention of, of that fundraising or whatever purpose they were doing. Um, I thought that what was unique about our project it was that the, the impetus for the project was actually moving my wife across the country and road tripping. So we figured since she had to move over here instead of just flying here, which would be rather boring, that we would take this time that we had to uh, see some of America that we had never seen before and also do something positive with the opportunity. So maybe you could tell us, what, are, what were some of the things that you saw on a road trip that you wouldn't have seen if you flew? <laughs> We saw, I, we just saw a lot of the country. I've never been, I've never been on a cross country road trip before. Um, I've flown in and out of certain states, uh, but I, this is the first time going through Utah and Arizona, a lot of the back country, uh, where we saw some really beautiful like rock formations and um, just, very interesting weather, which we never would have seen in an airplane. Um, our snowstorm turned into rain, which turned into lots of mud, uh, and then that turned into a, a tornado. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it kind of followed us, the storm kind of followed us from Arizona all the way up through like Virginia almost. So, so hail, huge hail. Um, you name it, you don't get that on an airplane. No. <laughs> and then just meeting people too, you know. We met a lot of people because our vehicle was 
so unique looking. Um, people would stop us and they just want to talk to us about what we're doing and they would share their stories of people that they knew in the military or perhaps they were themselves in the military. Um, so we would just stop and talk to people and um, that was just really great. So I know you're working with a filmmaker uh, and they, he came with you on the trip and how is the, the film coming? The film's coming along really well. He, uh, he lives in Dallas, Texas, and um, he has a trailer for the movie finished now, but he'll be working over the coming months to complete the movie. And um, we're really looking forward to when we're able to release that so uh, we can continue to um, bring a new dimension to the project because uh, now that the road trip is over, it will be interesting to give people a visual uh, sort of look into what that trip was like for us and also um, continue to raise that awareness about veterans and veterans issues and these specific charities that we were um, raising money for. Is there anything else you want to tell us about how unique this trip was for you? To me, this was a this was a life-changing trip. I'm not only just being on the road and experiencing that, but also being in a position where being on camera and being um, sort of the center of attention in a way and support, getting attention from other people, but as a way of, a way of um, promoting good organizations and talking about, um, you know, the issue of veteran suicides in our country and um, talking about great benefits and that there are out there. That was really, it was hard at times, it was really hard, but it was also um, a really wonderful experience. And um, I think, unfortunately, because of the weather and the stress of the travel, our dog died on when we got to Connecticut. So that was probably the hardest part. It was yeah. just, you know, <clears throat> kind of took a toll on everybody. Um, so that was definitely challenging, but it'll be a trip I'll never forget, that's for sure. And I think that for me, um, what was amazing was just getting to see so many different varieties of landscape and ways of life around the United States. Uh, like going into Nashville, Tennessee was one of my favorite stops because that city was so lively and vibrant mm -hmm. and unique in its own way, in a way that I'd never seen a city before. And I think that uh, that's something that's really great about traveling is getting to see places that are very unique and different. Um, but then also getting to see some of the similarities, uh, you know, similar, even though there's distinct landscapes and cities, there's also similarities as well and things that you connect with. Um, like most people, you know, they are, um, you know, most people want to be friendly, want to be helpful, are willing to talk to you and, you know, maybe give you some directions or whatever. And that's something that generally doesn't change from place to place. Um, but there were also like some really out of the way, very rural places that were very desolate and very poor that had a feeling of, at least for me, you know, like being a bit uncomfortable in some of these places that I didn't know and seemed like they, like if, like could be dangerous. And so uh, it was interesting to just go from place to place and have all of these, this wide range of emotion and feeling uh, and then also seeing this stuff, it was just kind of like all of all of our senses were just being filled and changed and stuff the whole trip, which was pretty fun.